there. I spoke to Jacob Kirkgaard, senior fellow at the Peterson Institute for International Economics, and I wondered, well, what does Germany's problems mean for the rest of Europe? I think there's no doubt that Germany is in for what I guess I would call a soft patch. And what I mean by that is that it had negative growth in the second quarter. I think it will probably have a likelihood of zero or negative growth in the third quarter, so technically a recession. But on the other hand, Germany is a country which still has virtually full employment. It has a balanced budget. It doesn't face any, you know, we're not on the cusp of some major economic crisis. In the very so short, short term, term it, it's a very short term thing, uh, but we perhaps do need to worry in the sense that it is also clear that even if Germany is not, you know, about to fall off the cliff or anything, it is a country that is not in a position to be the locomotive for the entire euro area, which it has been in the previous years. So this is, you know, this has implications beyond uh, Germany, obviously. Well, I, I, I wanted to actually go there, and I'm glad you brought it up. Some people would argue and would say that when Germany isn't feeling well, Europe gets sick. How's Europe doing? Well, there's no doubt that a number of uh, large parts of Europe is, uh, are still sick. Uh, you know, we are not out of the woods when it comes to the countries that are still in IMF programs or recently got out of IMF programs. And we have the second and third largest economies in the euro area, which have been suffering from what I consider to be a woeful lack of structural reform and generally political dysfunction. And if France and Italy are not doing well, well, then the Eurozone as a whole really can't do well either. This has been such an extraordinary year. We've had this sort of unforeseen event with what's going on with these sanctions with Russia and Ukraine. How much impact has that had, you think, overall to not just the numbers that we're seeing, but the psychology of consumers and business owners in Europe? Well, there's no doubt that this is the single biggest negative event to affect Germany. And it reflects uh, two things. One, generally, that Germany is a very export-oriented economy. Uh, that means it had, has the biggest exposure of any single European country to Russia. But it also, uh, you know, Germany has had a historically, obviously, quite troubled relation uh, with Russia. So problems on the eastern border, uh, which in this regard, uh, you know, Russia-Ukrainian border will count as that, has a disproportionate sentiment impact in Germany. That basically businesses who might just be on the cusp of launching a domestically oriented investment or any kind of new economic activity are thinking twice about it because of what is going on there. So, the, so no, this is the single biggest issue for the weakness in Germany and the weakness that we're seeing in all of the euro area. The, the U.S. has gone on the record for asking for um, Germany, for example, to, to boost, boost demand. Yeah. What does that mean? How would they just boost demand? It usually means a fiscal stimulus. And Germany is a country which currently has essentially a balanced budget. Uh, and uh, which is, of course, something that Angela Merkel is quite proud of. Uh, so objectively speaking, Germany has got ample space to uh, do a short-term fiscal stimulus. And my prediction would be that if Germany has negative growth in the third quarter and therefore technically falls into recession, we will see a, a relatively modest short-term stimulus in Germany focused on the sort of traditional public investments in infrastructure, highways, bridges, the types of things that really only governments can do. And that also being said, Germany hasn't done that much of in the last 10 years or so. The headlines in the last hour or so has been that Russia and the Ukraine have agreed to continue the gas deliveries, at least through winter. So a short-term agreement, if you will. Is this good enough to restore confidence? I mean, I, mean, I guess a short-term agreement is better than no agreement at all, I suppose. I think this is, this is certainly good news, because I think one of the main worries that you had in Germany and elsewhere was that this gas issue should spiral out of control over the course of the winter. I mean, you know, when it's the summer, people don't necessarily care very much about whether you have enough gas, but come winter, it becomes more important. And if it isn't that the case that the Russians and the Ukrainians have sort of agreed to a gas ceasefire, if you like, over the next, uh, over the winter, then that certainly is good news. Whether it's enough and it's going to really also re result in a broadening or, or cessation of hostilities 
of military hostilities on the border, uh, I think is an open question. But, you know, so far so good. And this is arguably the first piece of good news we've had from Russia and Ukraine for quite a while.